to start by coming into kneeling on our mat. My name is Rosemary, and I will be guiding you through today's practice. So just do what you can. If there's something that is causing you a lot of sensation, that is an indication that you have to back off out of the pose and do a little bit less pulling or stretching. So it's really up to you to find the pose that is attuning to your body, the level of the pose. And be careful so that you are paying attention to that sensation and having a safe practice. So we begin here in Varasana. Today's practice is going to be utilizing the lower back area and working with the digestive system. Sometimes a lot of our lower back pain is because of the digestive system. Things like constipation, too much acidity as we see, um, digestion that is slow, metabolisms that are weak can cause a little bit of back pain in the lower back. And it could be because vertebrae are compressed. There could be some sort of um, um, just dysfunction. And these kind of compressions can move the internal ascending and descending colons in different ways where our digestion is stuck. So this is why we would do a yoga practice for our backs. This is kind of the therapeutic action is to kind of loosen up those joints so that our internal functions, our internal organs can digest and eliminate. So this is our core of today's practice. Having that intact, I'm just going to move this chair just a slight bit over until we need it. There we go. And then we're going to start here into child's pose. So coming down onto your mat, we'll take our knees right under our toes, hands underneath our shoulders, and we'll start by pulling our belly button in really strong, as if you're massaging your insides with that action of the muscles of the joints. And then with that, we'll roll our spine up, inhale, and then exhale, roll your spine down, and let your stomach drop up. One more time. Pull, inhale, pull that abdominal, that belly button towards the spine very tightly. Bow down, up and down into the knees. And then roll your spine up and look up into that and pop. From here, we'll take the knees nice and wide. And we'll come into child's pose. Big toes are going to come together. And with that wideness, we'll descend our tailbones down towards our heels. And we'll stretch our hands high and start to bring our forehead down to the ground. Surrendering as we take this initial lower back stretch. And you can feel it as we descend the tailbone down. Breathe it home. Up all the way up, back to all fours, and then we'll take our way into our first downward dog. So your knees can be bent on your first one, and then you're pulling back and starting to walk the dog back and forth, back and forth. Eventually folding the stillness by placing your heels as close to the ground as you possibly can. And I'll get you to have a seat on your mat. Sitting onto a blanket would be a nice option for a seat. So taking yourself here and you could use a couple blocks to lean on. If you have a very tight lower back, then just leaning forward just slightly and taking less of an action would be a good modification. Otherwise, you're walking forward as deep as you can go in your body. Remember, we are practicing for ourselves, and we don't have to ideally come as far as I come. So if you're not as flexible as I am, or you're just new to the practice, or you've got a little bit more of than one, then less is okay. Be okay with less, that's all right. You're still starting to open up the vertebrae and the ligaments, 
as much as you can. And then hang out here and breathe and fall. Bring yourself up. Good. And now on this next one, we're going to switch to the other side. So we'll take ourselves to bringing this heel in. Dorsi flexing the toe, sitting up nice and tall, and then inhaling and forward fold. And for your first actions, you might want to stay up higher. You might want to come less, or maybe you're coming all the way down, you're grabbing your toe, and you're coming forward. So really do find that level here. And I'm gonna express that and remind you of it throughout the practice as well so that you're having a safe practice. But not only that, you're getting results. If you're gonna go push yourself against the range of motion that belongs to your body, then chances are it's gonna hurt. And that pain is an indication that you have come too far. So pay attention to those sensations, please. In essence, you are really being your own teacher in the practice. I am just a guide. We'll bring ourselves back, and that's very nice. And then we're gonna take ourselves into a wide-legged forward fold, so sit up nice and tall, and then start to fold forward. Just, just a nice action here. Just getting the backside to stretch. These are all stretches for the right left side. So coming into stretches that are attuning to our backside um, in all the poses is what we're going to do today. So you're really kind of paying attention to releasing the lower back. And with that release of the lower back, we can function a little bit better. We can move a little bit better. So getting mobility in the back will create a little bit of relief. And then we feel like going for a walk or we feel like doing other exercises, and we can because our back is not so tight that it's pulling against us. So that's what you want to do. You want to keep active, you want to keep moving, and you want to keep that back in, in here. All right, so we'll come back into our child's pose again. We'll do that full lifting and pulling back of the tailbone. And already you can feel that this is not as tight as it was the first time you did it today. And just hang out here and breathe. So every time you pull the pose, you can even close your eyes to access that, that gazing point. And you can access the breath uh, by maybe even counting it. You can start to count the breath and follow it all the way up to the inhale. Follow it all the way up to the exhale. And the more you do that, the more you return to it. It becomes um, just kind of second nature and you start to just follow your breath and you can compose and you start to be okay with just stilling the eyes and a gazing point or closing the eyes and finding a gazing point either way. And then come on to all fours and make your way into downward dog again. And once again this can be done with bent knees, your heels can be lifted and slowly walking down to the heels and pumping the legs. Just finding a nice equilibrium there as you stretch the back out. Eventually, you start to really kind of pull into the lower back and down the hamstrings and the legs. Take a big side out. Good. And we'll bring ourselves back and then come up into standing, walking your feet forward and coming up into standing. Inhale all the way up, pull hands together, and we'll stretch over to one side. Inhale back to center, stretch over to the other side. Inhale back to center, exhale, Samastiti, bring yourself close to the top of your mat. Feet are going to be hip width apart. Lift your toes and rock your weight into your heels a little bit further back. And then put your hands on your waist and try to follow your nose so that you're folding with a straight spine into Uttanasana. And then maybe bringing your hands down onto those blocks at any given level that is suitable for your body. So we want to come into just a supported forward fold. 
You could use your chairs here. If you don't have blocks, you could use your chairs for support as well. And then just coming into Uttanasana, forward fold. Fold and breathe. Good. Push into the feet, bend the knees slightly, and come up with a straight spine. Very nice. We're going to turn to the long edge of the mat, and we're going to come into another forward fold. Those forward folds are so nice to stretch that backside out. So come into forward fold, let yourself just drop down here. Hands will come down, lift the gaze ahead of you, and just let yourself stretch. You can bend the knees slightly here if it's too much action on your hamstrings. You can also bring yourself up. Higher onto your blocks if needed. Otherwise, start to walk your hands towards the arches and let your gaze come down behind you, ideally for the pose. We'll take a back release here. Either you're walking a block forward and coming on top of a block for less, or hands onto the ground. Inhale, lengthen and pull the back side back. Stretch that great left side back. Hold the breathe. Walk your hands back underneath you. Heel toe your feet into a narrower stance. Bend into your knees, push into your feet, and bring yourself up with a straight spine. Beautiful. Inhaling here. And exhaling. Release and let go. Okay. So we'll bring the blocks to the top of the mat for our standing sequence. And we'll do the standing sequence on the blocks. And then we'll be doing some twisting of the chair. Bring your feet in between the blocks and step out a long way with that back foot. Turn open to the long end of the mat, making a straight line at the center of the chest to both arms. Inhale here, bring the hand onto the waist, and exhale, tip yourself over like a teapot. Now you could weight bear into the leg, however, I do find to get better results if you push into something so that you can use the torso and use the resistance of pushing into something to get this lifting action. You see this lifting action of the upper cervical spine. And so from here, we're getting tailbone to kind of the head to align in this pose. This is triangle pose. Uttita Trikonasana, and we're lifting away from it. So you're dropping, you're lifting. So being active with both feet and hands and lifting away. And you can really feel the stretch onto the lower back in this action. So we're getting this part of the vertebrae to open nicely by lifting away from it in both directions. Inhale here, bring your hand back onto your waist. Bring your gaze to your big toe and you're going to bend your front knee strongly forward about a 90 degree angle. Elbow's going to come to the inside knee and then once again get this turning and lifting action. The elbow pushing into the inside knee will form a little resistance against the pose. And then bring your hand up high. You will take your hand up and over so the elbow is coming over the ear, bicep over the ear and then if you can look up at your elbow. If your neck is an issue, then look down into your chest and hold here and breathe. Uttita Parsvokanasana, extended side ankle pose. Good. And we're going to take ourselves up and forward. I'm just going to get that length out of the way. And you bring a block ahead of that foot and you keep yourself here. And then from here, you're going to lift right into our. Solid. You might be able to turn the gaze sideways and bring yourself into a big smile for doing it. Bend the knee and gracefully come back and out of the pose and push up. And if that wasn't so graceful for you, no worries. All right, 
switch to the other side. I'm going to switch my blocks literally so that you're not looking at the back side and bring yourself to the other side. Step the left leg in between the blocks. Step out with the back leg a long way, so long snaps, and open up the arms to the outside of the long edge. Hand comes on the waist. Pull inhale, exhale. Bring yourself to triangle pose. Extending your pushing action into the block, and then pulling the energy up into the hip, opening through the shoulder, and then resisting and bringing yourself through both directions. Uttita Trikonasana, triangle pose. Hold and breathe. And then just keep pushing away from it in both directions. So you can grow the space in between the space. The space in between the space. Good. Bend your knee. And then bring yourself to the inside block. Lock the elbow to the inside knee. Open the shoulder to the long edge in the neck. Reach this hand up high to the sky. Push away from the pose. Don't let yourself just lean into it. Push away from it. Roll the shoulder up and over. Bring the bicep up with the ear. Tuck the knees up to the elbow or look down into your chest. Now pull away from baby toe edge to baby finger. You're pulling the length out of the side leg. Uttita Parasvakanasana, extended side angle pose. Push into the feet, rise up. Inhale here, and let's bring ourselves forward. Step the block ahead of you, and then lift the back leg all the way up high to the sky. And we're going to squeeze my hands the block and open the side of you. Gracefully, come out, bring yourself all the way up, and inhale here. Beautiful job. Inhale all the way up, exhale. Some STT equal standing pose. We're going to come back to that forward fold action again, repeating it. So coming forward, feet are hip width apart, inhale lengthen, and exhale, fold. Now, this time, you can stay up high if you're still very stiff in the back. Or you can bring yourself down onto the floor or a little bit lower on the blocks and come into holding a little deeper. Uttanasana, standing forward fold. Inhale, lengthen, push into the floor and bring yourself up. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, Samastiti, equal standing pose. Beautiful. Now we're going to take some twisting actions. So we've got a sequence of twisting actions coming. You'll take your chair and you're going to need your chair on the wall. So taking your chair on the wall, we're going to take our leg up on the chair. Now, the arm that is outside, on the outside line of that chair, it's going to come to the, uh, the, the, the outside of the knee that's closest to the wall. This hand is going to reach back. You're going to push into the standing leg and lengthen. The inhaling here, and then on the exhale, pull and twist. From the lower base of the spine to the center and to the upper torso. So you're resisting on both sides of the, of the foot. This is Uttita Maturasana on the chair. Let's bring ourselves to the other side. Taking your foot up onto the chair, bring your hand on the outside knee, reach back with your top hand, push into the standing leg, full inhale and exhale. Turn and twist. Good, and bring yourself down. We'll take ourselves to one more action on the chair. Just move your chair away from the wall from this one. And if you have a chair that you can sit through, then please sit through the chair. That will be a better action. Otherwise, you'll take the outside arm and you'll bring it across to the seat, uh, the top rail of the chair. And then you bring the opposite hand towards your right buttock or the outside buttock. And you'll turn.
finding that nice tall spine and resisting and turning in both directions. Let's come to the other side. So bring your hand to this chair and then inhale and turn. And unwind. Good job. Now we'll take ourselves to a downward dog on the chair. So take yourself to the chair. We'll take a Surya Namaskar. Step back so that you're into a long way back. And then from here you're going to drop forward and we're going to do a push up. And then we're going to scoop ourselves up looking up to the sky. And then we'll pull back, keep your feet down, hip width apart, and here you're going to pull back until you feel a nice, beautiful stretch happening in the back side. That's lovely. Just getting the shoulders to adjust. Now, we're going to take ourselves to Warrior Three. Now we're going to use the chair and the wall on Warrior Three. So, on Warrior Three, you want to have a distance where your leg can come up like this, and then you want to have the distance so that your hands come either on the seat of the chair or up to the chair. So, we'll first position this leg. This foot is long and equal to the long edge of the mat. And this could be your modification right here. So you can reach just right here. If you want to take it into a little bit of stronger action, you'll bring your chair a little further and bring your foot to the wall. And then from here, you'll be taking your arms up and bringing your head down. So either one. Bring yourself down and switch to the other side. So here, I'm bringing my foot onto the wall, square off your hips, and then either hands onto the chair or reaching for the top. And bring yourself down. We'll take another downward dog. Bring your feet hip width apart and then move and stretch back. Feel that nice release in the tailbone. Big breath out. Good job. All right, so we're going to take a little break from those standing poses and all those strong adjustments. You will bring your chair to the back of the wall and we'll be ready for the next sequence. And we'll bring ourselves down. And we're going to come into a series of twists here as we bring ourselves down. You can sit on a blanket or if you have a bolster, I'm going to use a bolster this time. Sitting on a bolster. All right, so you're sitting on whatever prop is your props, whatever suitable to you. And we'll come into easy twist first. So my hips are really nice and high here. I've given myself a lot of space purposely so that I can really access this part of the torso. I'll take a block behind. Maybe because my arms are short, you may not need that. Inhale here, lengthen. Turn from the lower base of the spine, and then turn from the middle base of the spine, and then turn the shoulders and the neck. Exhale, release the post. Bring yourself over to the other side. Taking yourself into easy twist here, nice and high. And I'm, I'm purposely making the direction and the lifting of the pelvis and the lifting of the arms using props. Purposely making them direct towards lower back here. The different positioning is directed into different places in the spine. 
holding down, pull the belly button in, and then one more twist and turn. I was trying to get myself to adjust there. We'll keep trying. All right, Matrasana. First, you flex this toe and bring this knee up. Full inhale. And then exhale. Just grab the outside knee on this one. Full inhale and exhale. Resist and pull. Until you're comfortable. Other side. Knee will come up. Inhale, lengthen. Dorsi flex this toe. Don't let it be lazy. Sit up tall into the spine. Full inhale. And then exhale. Twist and turn. And unwind. Beautiful. And we'll bring ourself down. We're going to come into Baddha Konasana, a, a nice adjustment here for our spines. So we'll just take that bolster and we'll give it a little propping. Now for some of you, I do realize that lying down is a difficult thing. So this is where we could utilize our chair. And you can bring the booster up as high as that if you need to. So if you need to come up as high as that for these two poses that are coming up, you can use the chair to help us. So if that's you, then go ahead and use the chair. And otherwise, you'll just pop that, that up onto two blocks. I've got two blocks stacked in a scissoring action. So one is just kind of a little behind the other. It makes kind of a, a solid stair that won't slide that way. And then you can slide the bolster down or up to make it a position that is good for you as well. All right, so we're gonna do this without a strap because many of you do not have long enough straps to do this properly at home, so we'll do it without a strap. But you may need props under your knees if, you're, if your hips are really tight. And please take that prop underneath your knees to help that hip. So it's not going to overstretch the external rotation there. So feet are going to get feet together and you're going to pull your heels towards your groin as much as your body comfortably allows. And you can flap the wings of the butterfly here. This is butterfly pose seated. We'll take just a slight forward fold because it is a nice stretch for the back just going forward. And then from here, we're just going to use the butterfly pose. Tuck your pelvis forward, tip your tailbone down, and then rolling your spine forward, and then guiding every vertebrae right down. Now, your buttock should be on the floor. There should be about this worth of space between your buttocks and the bolster. And then you make yourself comfortable into your hips by using your crop or not. Hands will come to the side. And here, you're just going to let the spine adjust to the palms. You'll close your eyes and just soften it to the pose. So these, this is critical alignment actions. We're just going to let the pose do its work. We're just going to let our inner front stretch. And we're going to arrive into breathing into the sensations that we feel in our hips. And just hang out with our breath. Following our inhale up for one, two, three, four, five. Holding at the top. And then exhale. One, two, three, four, five. Holding the body. This is what we call summer routine breathing. Equal breathing. Continue that practice on your own as you lie in those for the next two minutes.
take a great big breath up. And before we come out of the pose, let's bring our hands up and over your feet, ask them on that chair, let the just stretch the arms. Really bring a really, really beautiful stretch from the hips to the shoulders. You can feel it. There's a lot of sensation happening in those hips as it stretches. It will make you feel good once you come up. So slowly bring your knees in. Bring your hands down and if you can just stay there for a few minutes, maybe even rock your hips back and forth after that strong adjustment. And just get your hips to sway back and forth. And rolling over to your side. And bring yourself up. And everybody is okay? All right, we're gonna come into another adjustment here. Now this is another pose that is sometimes difficult for people to handle sitting onto their knees like this. So a nice option for making this pose easier is to take your blanket or your towel that you should have available and then you roll that up into a narrower kind of action and then you bring that underneath your knees. So just tuck it into the inside creases of your knees and that gives a little bit more space for those knees and it will help you make this pose easier. You can also adjust the level of this bolster to make it a little higher. So you can slide that bolster onto the chair or make the blocks higher. So this is Sutta Varasa. You want to tuck your tailbone forward and then lift the front part of the hip to get the space for this pose. This is really important to make the pose comfortable. So I'll go on with that again. You're tucking the tailbone forward, so there's a little thrusting action in the wrist forward. And then you're lifting through the psoas from the quadriceps to the psoas, the front of the hips is the psoas, and you're getting that length. And with that length, it's going to allow you to adjust and lie down. I'm hitting the chair, so I'm going to have to adjust my position here. So find your adjustment there. Just move away a little bit more. Alright, so once again, you are tucking your tailbone forward, and then you're lying down in the pose, and finding a, a place where you're comfortable. This is Supta Varasana, lying down here as a pose. Pull your belly button in strongly to keep your pubis thrusting forward. And do strong action more with Nili Bandha. So you're pulling up through that. So you're actually squeezing all the digestive organs. And you're also making space in the digestive area here. So this is going to release the lower back in the long run. Step up through the center, push into your hands, and then crawl forward. The first thing that happens is you need to release those ankles, so just stretch the heel back, stretch the heel back, stretch the Achilles, and then come to the other side and stretch the Achilles back. Very nice. That should give you some nice releases through the backside. All right, how are we all doing? Everybody's doing okay? All right. So we're gonna come into some reversing action now so that we can get all those fluids to kind of tip upside down into an inversion. So we'll use our bolster for helping us in our chair for our inversion today. So you'll come into your chair. 
So after we've got that space opened up into our abdominal, releasing our lower back, then we kind of want to flush everything out. So you come to the side of your bolster and your hips will be remaining on the bolster. And then you'll bring yourself, first of all, up on the chair with your legs up in the chair. So it's a very safe, supported way of doing uh, an inversion. This is a, a variation of a shoulder stand, a variation of a shoulder stand. So you'll bring your legs up to the sky. Now many of you probably do not do shoulder stand. I find a lot of people don't do shoulder stand. It's just too difficult to start an action for a lot of people. So just coming here with a bolster on your hips and hanging your legs upside down is a really beautiful, comfortable, restorative way of doing an inversion. You're still getting the benefits of bringing everything upside down, letting the fluids, all the synovia fluids, all the blood, all the, all, the, all the fluids in our body is flowing downwards towards the pelvis, towards the heart, the lungs. So we're still getting a really beautiful kind of rejuvenation. And I do encourage you to hang out with us for long periods of time at home. We're sitting a lot, so this folding action of our sitting muscles is kind of compressed, and that is not a good thing. So we're going to express this a little bit more by bringing our feet to the chair. You'll push your feet into the chair, and then you can lift your hips up, and here you got a nice kind of river action going. Now those of you who can, you can bring your hands underneath your lower back and make the pillars of the bridge here. And then from here, you can take yourself up into shoulder stand. Make your way into Halasana. safely down onto the chair. So this is all kinds of different modifications. You didn't need to go up into shoulder stand. If that didn't happen, then be okay with just being here for a starter range. And eventually you'll build into that with time. Maybe you're here and you're here at first, and then those hands come underneath and you bring yourself up. So just for practice, do what you can. Remember, we just do what we can in our practice here. Good. We'll hang out here for just a few more minutes and just bring ourselves upside down. Bring your knees in. And then here we're going to roll over to our side to get off. So you'll roll over to your side and you'll bring yourself up. Good. Hopefully everybody is nice and safe and got through those actions as we progressed. All right, we're going to work our abdominals now a little bit. So you're going to come into working your abdominals and coming into a little bit of uh, a nice release for the intercostal muscles and lower back muscles. So we'll use the bolster as a lumbar support now and we're going to come into our boat pose using the chair. So you'll come into using the bolster to support the lower back, the chair is against the wall, and then bringing your knees up onto the chair. And here you're going to pull in the chair and you're going to lift the spine tall. Because many of us in boat pose are rounded into the lower back. So you want to lift away from the lower back and lift up nice and tall. And Now, boat pose. Very nice. All right. This chair is just going to go off to the side for a bit. We're going to take our two blocks against the wall and we're going to come into a nice back release here. So now the bolster is going to go long wise, or you can have a folded blanket. So you could take your blanket folded into a nice rounding action. So you could 
take it into an accordion fold. I'll just demonstrate that for those of you who are using blankets. And you just take it back and forth and back and forth. And you get a nice adjustment to the bolster that way. Okay? So if you don't have a bolster, you can make one. All right, so we're going to judge our distance here. Your knees are going to be slightly bent. The bolster is going to be under your tailbone, not quite far enough. So just move it back a little bit. So find your distance so that the tailbone is here. There's a slight bend in your knees. Then you're going to tuck your pelvis forward. Roll one vertebrae at a time down onto the bolster. Let your head hang off the back. Now, if this is not comfortable, you can place a blanket or a block underneath that neck and then your hands will come up to the side. Vikramita Dandasana, a nice, beautiful, restorative back bend. It's giving you a nice, kind of critical alignment adjustment through the center of the spine. And critical aligners, they use black straps for this kind of action. This is the same thing in our younger style. And it's a very therapeutic action for just getting the kinks out of the back. Usually the upper back is what's rounding, but the lower back is what's involved in it. So this just gives those actions a nice kind of subtle action. Now, if you come into the pose and you find that, oh, it's just not so comfortable, don't stay in it. Don't let yourself burn through a sensation that's not comfortable. Go ahead and readjust yourself. Make yourself comfortable. And then allow that comfort to come up all the way through the feet and the ankles. Feel yourself relaxing through the knees and calves. Let yourself relax in tension that's around the lower back. Release the tension in the shoulders, the elbows, the hands. Open up and release the neck, the teeth and the jaw. Yourself just lift away with your eyes closed as the pose is enough. We'll come into pranayama breath work here using Paloma 1. We'll begin with an exhale. And then inhale and hold the breath. Feel the breath into the lower back, base of the spine. And then inhale a little bit more. Feel the breath into the middle of the torso as the belly button comes in. Inhale one more time, feel the chest expand and take some time to observe the space. See if you can see one reason. Then exhale. Second round, inhale all the way up and hold. Inhale one more time and hold. Inhale all the way to the top of the chest. Once you've obtained that space, return to it. Exhale. Inhale. Inhale one more time. Hold. Inhale all the way up and forward. And exhale. Return to your natural breath rhythm and let yourself be to your side and just hang out in the sideline for a little bit. Um, 
just let yourself lie. And then from here, you're going to bring yourself all the way up. We're going to take ourselves to legs up on the wall for our last action today. So you bring your bolster and you'll place your bolster about a block width away from the wall. Hop onto your bolster. Hop onto your bolster. And then from here, start to lower your legs up onto the wall. And we'll end our class here with legs up on the wall. Coming into a comfortable place, you can take your hands up into the front arms. You'll be staying here for a good four to five minutes. And then from here, working our way into our final Shavasana pose. So go back to feeling comfort. So if something's not comfortable, remember that you can adjust that and make yourself comfortable. You want to cover up your eyes. You can cover up your eyes with your blanket. That's a nice way to cover up your eyes. I'm going to cover up my eyes with my blanket while I'm doing it this way. And then just really kind of just coming into and just releasing the pose. So this is like ultimate relaxation. You can twist it and you fold, you can stretch that lower back. You've adjusted, you've got pedal for a moment. You've done a lot of work in the adjustments of the back. So now we just want all that to kind of flush out and take, take its own natural way to heal with some restorative actions. It's so, so important to give yourself time to receive and take these restorative actions. I know that we have all kinds of things that we want to rush off and do, and it's sometimes hard to just kind of lie out in the middle of the day, but, but just take this five minutes. It's just so important to the part of practice.